Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today's tutorial is going to be how to make an animated GIF for your Twitter to advertise your YouTube channel, your Twitch channel, your Discord, social media, literally anything that you want to advertise. You can use animated GIFs to kind of support your tweets like some of the ones I'm going to show you on screen now. And they kind of just make your tweets look and seem a lot more professional and kind of entice people into actually seeing what your content's about. So without further ado, let's get into how to make it. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is open up After Effects and you're going to want to click New Project. Then you're going to click on New Composition. I'm going to name this whatever you want. I'm going to name mine Twitter GIF Tutorial. Then you're going to want to copy the settings that I've got here on screen. So you want the width 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels. You want this to be square pixels, 60 frames per second, full resolution, duration 8 seconds. So you want to put it in this box, guys, not the end one. The end one's milliseconds. This one's seconds, minutes, and hours. You don't want to put it in the other ones. You want to put it just exactly how I've got it like that in that box there. And then the background color doesn't matter because we're going to be changing it anyway, but I'm just leaving mine as black. Well, that's my default. And then you want to click OK. Then what you're going to want to do is import your logo into After Effects. You want to go File, Import, File, and then just find whatever wherever you've saved your logo and you want to come and import it. Then what we're going to do is click and hold, click and drag on the logo and drag it into this little box down here, this little gray box. This is our timeline. Let's drag it down to that. Then you're going to want to click on it on the little monitor, like on the actual preview. You're going to want to click and hold, then press Shift and Alt or Shift and Option if you're on Mac, and then just drag it kind of in. So it's about roughly this size in your screen. You can make it slightly smaller if you want. I'm going to make it right about here. That's the size I'm going to want this. So for me, that was 39%. Let's round this up and make it 40. So we've got 40% scale to start off with, right? Then underneath our layer, we're going to click right click, new and solid. My solid is already the right color for what I want it to be. You want to make sure these settings are correct. They should be because it copies the composition setting. So it should make it a, like fill the whole canvas already. And you just want to click OK. You're going to drag that under our logo and we're just going to lock it because we're not going to do anything to this logo. It's just going to be our background color. Now we get into animating the actual logo. What you want to do is drop down this little arrow next to the logo layer and drop down the same arrow on transform. Then you want to click the stopwatch on scale and rotation. Clicking the stopwatch basically makes these keyframes and the keyframes is telling After Effects when your animation is going to start. So when we want the scale and rotation to start changing, that is going to start from these points. Then you want to click and drag anywhere on the timeline and just make sure these two keyframes get highlighted in the selection and just drag them to 10 about 10 frames if you can't see it you drag this little slide at the bottom and it zooms in i'm going to zoom into 10 frames and we're just going to make sure it's lined up with that perfectly so there we go 10 frames then we're going to come another 10 frames along to 20 frames click the two keyframe buttons on the left here not the stopwatches that will delete those keyframes you want to click the keyframe buttons which are these two diamonds on the left then what we're going to want to do is we're going to make our scale slightly smaller. So I'm going to make that 30%. And we're going to make our, our rotation minus 20. Actually, that's a bit much. I'm going to take that down just a few. You can kind of scroll it and see what you like. If you click and hold on this number of rotation, the not you don't want to click on this one because this is the number of rotations. So if you click it on 14, it's not going to be 14 degrees. It's going to spin it around 14 times, which is not what you want. So I'm going to put this on minus what 17 17 looks nice so it's just got this slight subtle kind of like you're pulling it back and twisting it. that's the kind of animation that i'm going for and then once i'm happy with that i'm going to come 20 frames along to 40 frames press the keyframe buttons again on the on the left then what we're going to do is whatever number you've put with a minus in front of it you're just going to delete that minus symbol and click enter so that's just going to make it spin back the other way and then what we're going to do is click and hold on the scale property and you just want to drag it really 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 big so that it covers your whole screen now if your logo is slightly kind of off center like mine like the bottom half of my logo is slightly bigger than the top what you can do is come back to this first keyframe here the very first keyframe so that your logo is just flat like this zoom in a little bit by holding alt and pressing and zooming in with your mouse and a scroll wheel or trackpad if you're on a laptop come up to the top here and there's there's this little box with little four little arrows pointing outwards in it I'm going to click on that tool, zoom in a bit more, and you want to click on this little target. You want to make sure 
the logo layer selected and you're gonna click on this little target in the middle and just drag it up a little bit so that it sits in the middle of this little white section in here. So now when the animation plays, if we zoom out, when it takes up the whole screen, it should do it evenly. So we should be reaching the corners. We should be filling up the whole screen at this frame, but it's obviously not, which means it needs to go a bit higher. So we're gonna zoom back in and we're just gonna drag it up a tiny bit more, something like that. Now when it zooms in, as you can see, yeah, that's, that's kind of done it. And it's made our logo really big. So you want your logo to zoom in so much so that it takes up the whole screen and it makes your background white or whatever color your logo is, it makes it that color. So you want to click back onto the selection tool if you don't have that selected already. And if you want to reset where your where your um, preview is, I couldn't find the word then. You can hold space and drag it and then just press Alt to zoom in. And then you can just kind of drag it around till you're happy with it somewhere. And it's V to get back on the selection tool. So now we've got an animation that looks like this. And in fact, that looks even a bit quick for me. So what I'm going to do is highlight the last four keyframes we've made. And I'm just gonna drag them another 10 frames across like that. I'm gonna grab the last two keyframes that we've made and drag them another 10 keyframes across as well. So that'll take us up to one second. So the first second of our animation is just gonna be like so. You can make it slightly quicker if you want by dragging, by selecting the keyframes and moving them close to the first set of keyframes. And basically what that means is it has to reach that end points, end values that we've set a lot quicker. So I want to go something like this. For mine, that's kind of perfect for me. I might even make this a little bit in the, more in the middle. Okay, so that's, that's perfect for me. And then, so that looks really smooth already. And two things you can do to make this even smoother is highlight all of them, hover over one of the keyframes and right click and then click keyframe assistant and easy ease. And what that makes basically does is makes all of the speed kind of like ramp a lot smoother. So it's gonna be slower, it's gonna speed up, it's gonna slow down at this point and then it's gonna speed up again to the end. So it's gonna be nice and smooth, the animation, it makes it look nice and fluid. And another thing you can do to make the animation look even cleaner, look even smoother, sorry, is if you come over to the layer panel again, you should have these boxes here on the right of the name of the, of the layer. If you don't, come down to this button here, toggle switches and modes, that'll switch your things that are next to your layer name. And you wanna make sure you have this one with the three dots checked for the logo. And it should automatically check this uh, one up here as well, but if it doesn't, just check that as well, because that means you can actually see it. If you have it unchecked, you won't see the motion blur. And now when we zoom in, you can see here, that looks a lot smoother already. So right around here, Right around 35 frames, what we're going to do is press this text layer at the top, just kind of guess in the middle of the of the, of the the video preview and just click once. Don't drag, don't make a text box, you just want to click once. Then on paragraph, I want to make sure this is center aligned. And then to align it, click on the align tab and you want to click these ones in the middle here. Make sure this is on composition and click these two buttons that I'm clicking here and that will make sure that your text that you're going to type is directly in the center. And then you can double click on the T down here and just type your channel name or whatever text you want to put and want to fly in like so. So now I've got caps lock on which disabled the preview then. As you can see, we've got this text, but we don't want it to appear straight away. We want it to kind of fly in right about here, I'd say. Maybe one frame back. There, that's perfect. I'm gonna drop down the arrows drop down transform you want scale and rotation again but to start with we're going to drag the scale property down to zero because we want that to be nothing we don't want it to be on the screen then if we go roughly 10 frames across i'm going to drag mine to about here so roughly 10 frames doesn't have to be exact for this bit because we're probably going to change it anyway i'm going to click scale and rotation again Scale, you're going to make 100. Rotation is going to be zero, but we're going to go back to the first one. We're going to make the scale slightly bigger. We're going to change it back to zero after, so this is just for previewing the rotation. And then rotation angle, 
we want to change that slice just so it matches up with the line of our logo, the kind of tilt on our logo. We want it to line up so it kind of looks like it's zooming in with the logo when it zooms in. So as you can see, if we change this scale back to zero, sorry, I forgot to do that. When we play it back now, we've got something that looks like that. Now that text is really, zooms in really, really fast. So you can't really see the rotation. So what I'm going to do is drag these keyframes just a little bit slower. So it's still quick, but it's not as quick as it was before. Then what I'm gonna do is highlight all of the keyframes, right click on one, keyframe assistant, easy ease. So that makes them all nice and smooth. So this is how it's gonna look now. Which looks perfect for me. I might even highlight all of these keyframes and drag them a bit further back before. So it starts to come in a bit earlier with the logo. Yeah, I like how that looks. And again, we're gonna click motion blur on the text layer as well. So when that zooms in, it looks nice and clean in the same style. Then what you're gonna to wanna to do is drag your playhead back to the start of your preview, press space and just kind of watch it. And when you, f you can kind of feel when you feel like the texture transition. So once you've read it and you've just kind of been enough time where you think, okay, right, I can read something else now. So for me, that's kind of, where is that? I'm gonna say around two seconds, highlight the last two keyframes, hit control C to copy and then control V to paste. Go 10 frames, go, about 15 frames along. Highlight the first two keyframes, do the same, Control C, Control V to paste it. So now what we've got is the text flying with the logo and then it zooms out really quick. But what we're gonna do is highlight the second two keyframes and just drag them about halfway um, back towards the first set of keyframes. So that you see it zooms out really, really quick, but in the same way that it zoomed in with the logo. So we've got that. And then what we're gonna do, so when this zooms out, this is where the transition for our other text to come in is going to be. We're gonna line up the timeline indicator with the last set of keyframes. And you're gonna select the text layer, hit Control C, Control V to make a duplicate of that layer. And then you're gonna double tap in the on the T. Now you're not gonna see anything because the opacity is on zero. If you hit backspace to delete the text, and type in what, whatever you want the text to now pop up with after it's said your channel name. I'm going to type new videos every week because that's what I want people to know about my channel when I tweet out about it. So they go and check out some of my tutorials and if they like it, they subscribe, which is what you should do if you like my tutorials and you're finding this one helpful. Then what we're gonna do is drop down the transform tools, transform properties of that layer again. And we're just going to drag the first set of keyframes on the left of our time indicator here and we're gonna drag them about the same distance just to the right, so now it flies in instead of flying out. And then you can do the same with the first set of keyframes over here, so we can drag the left, the left set, roughly the same distance to the right set, and we're gonna drag that about a second along, so I'm gonna say at 10 frames after three seconds, actually let's make that a bit longer so they have more time to read that. Let's do it at 20 frames. So 20 frames after three seconds, it's gonna fly out. So now our total animation will look something like this. Which looks pretty clean in my opinion. In fact, if you feel like either of the text layers are on screen for too short a time or too long, what you can do is highlight these keyframes on the first text layer and hold shift, highlight these keyframes on the second text layer and just move them along your timeline until you feel like they're at the right, they're on screen for like the right amount of time. If that makes sense. So I like how that looks, and I feel like that transition is even a little bit quick. So what I'm going to do is just highlight the second keyframes of both of the layers, and just drag them out slightly, just so the transition is a little bit longer. There we go. I prefer that. So that means that I'm going to have to drag these ones further along as well. So that it's on screen for a bit longer. I'm gonna drag that to three seconds and 50 frames we're at now. So now our animation looks like this. And then what we can do is as this one flies out, you can drop down the two text layers because we're done with them now because this is appearing off screen. As we get to about here, we're gonna drop down our logo layer and we're gonna zoom out a bit so we can see the first keyframes. 
I'm going to highlight the last ones, hit Control C, Control V, scroll a bit further along, about, about 20 frames along, highlight the middle keyframes, hit Control C, Control V from what we animated earlier, and then highlight the first keyframes, Control C, scroll along a bit further, and Control V. So we've basically reversed the animation that we've done at the start, which is going to create this nice kind of looping effect when you view it on Twitter. So now our entire animation looks like this. So we've got the logo, it zooms in, it comes in with the channel name, switches to new videos every week, zooms out, logo zooms out, and then we're looping again once we're on the tweet. So that looks pretty, pretty clean to me. And then the last thing we've got to do is make sure that it's not too long. If we actually play out the rest of this animation, it's just a static logo for like four seconds. And you don't want to watch that. People are just going to scroll past your tweet at that point. So we're going to come to six seconds on the timeline here. And this bar here, this is your work area. You're going to drag that down to six seconds. Kind of right click on the bar itself that we've just dragged and click trim comp to work area and there you have it this is going to be exactly how our gif looks when we when we export it so to export it all you've got to do is hit Control s which will save the file save it as whatever you like i'm going to save minus twitter gif tutorial click save and save it in a place where you're going to be able to remember it because then what we've got to do is open up Media Encoder because you can't export as an animated GIF straight from After Effects. You've got to open up Media Encoder. Once that's opened up like this, click plus at the top underneath Q, that little plus button there. Find where you saved your GIF, which I'm going to do here and click open. And it might take a second or two to load on this bit. It just kind of like locates the files that are inside your composition in After Effects. If it's only got a couple of layers like our logo and stuff, it shouldn't take too long like it hasn't now. And you want to find your composition, which will be what you named it at the start, or if you didn't name it properly, it'll come up with comp one or something along those lines. Then click OK. Then my settings are already set, but in this bit for you, it'll probably say something like H264, or it'll have like a type of file in this bit. Just click on it. It might come up with dynamic link connection, and it should load you into where you can change the settings to make it an animated GIF. Yep, perfect. So format. You want to drop this menu down and click animated gif make sure export video is ticked and export audio isn't it shouldn't have the option there anyway if you haven't done audio but if it is ticked just uncheck that double check all of these settings down here under the video tab are the same um, it might say frame rate 50 instead of 60 because i think gifs you can only export at 50 frames per second but all of the rest of these should be the same and then you just want to click ok if you want to know where the file is going to be once you've exported it if you click on this kind of like file location tab, you can change where you want it to go. So I want it to go to my desktop. This is what I want it to be saved as. And then click save. And then you're done guys. All you have to do is click the start encode, which is the little play button at the top right. And you'll see it rendering it out down there. So that is pretty much it. That is how you make animated GIFs for your Twitter. If you render these out as a different file type, so any video file type, you'll be able to post it on Instagram as well, which is another way you can advertise whatever you're advertising with this GIF. But yeah, guys, thank you for watching. That is how you make animated GIFs for your Twitter. Please leave a like on the video if you did find it helpful. And please consider subscribing. I post tutorials like this one every single week. And I'm going to be releasing some products for you guys to try out soon as well. So stay tuned for that and subscribe if you want to see that come out sooner. But thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.